I'm going to be talking today about my book on wolves. And um, I'm going to be asking you questions, showing you things, and talking a little bit. We're not going to last too long today. We're only going to try to get it all in in a short time. So if I call on you, uh, I'm going to call on your name, and you can unmute yourself and then respond. And I think I'm going to start by asking, uh, I assume that all of you have had a chance to watch me reading a part of my book on wolves. Has there anybody, is there anybody here who has not seen me? No. So you all have seen me. And you know that the book on wolves that I read, I really only read the beginning two pages. So in my book on wolves, I really only read the introduction. Which is this page over here. And I read the second page, and I really haven't read very much about wolves. Some of you may have already read this book on wolves, but I'm going to start off by asking a couple of true and false questions. And I'd like you to each respond. So if you want to jot them down, you can uh, jot them down. But I'll start by asking this question. This is a true or false question. Wolves only howl at the full moon. Do you think that's true or false? Okay, let me call on somebody. Carson, what do you think? Unmute yourself. False. 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 Very good. Anybody else think it's true? Kate and Claire, what do you think? Unmute. Me too. What do you think? False. False, okay. And the reason that it's false is that it's very interesting about wolves howling. A lot of people used to think that, that wolves only howl at the full moon. But the truth is they make all kinds of sounds that um, they are, um, some of the sounds that they make are, um, they squeal, they uh, bark, they howl, they make all kinds of interesting sounds, and they play with each other. But when they howl, something funny happens. They begin howling by themselves, and then they're gradually joined in their howling by other wolf pack members. So at first, they can be two or three wolf pack members that are howling. And before long, the entire wolf pack is howling away and they seem to be singing because their howling goes up and down like a chorus. So they're not howling at anything in particular. They're just howling in, in enjoyment. Okay, let me ask you another question. Some of you may have heard the term the lone wolf. So is it true or false that wolves live mostly alone? If you know the answer, raise your hand and let me call on you. Simon, unmute yourself and tell me. True. It's true that you think wolves live only alone. Anybody think it's false? Kate? I think it's false. Keegan, what do you think? I also think it's false. Anybody else? Okay. Well, the truth is that it's false. Not only don't wolves live alone, but wolves are what we call social animals. A social animal means that it lives with others of its kind. So being social means that wolves usually, not always, but usually live in groups called what? Who knows the name? What do we give? call a group of wolves? McGuire? Unmute. A pack. Exactly right. We call it a wolf pack. And wolves usually live in packs. And while I don't ask this question in true or false, anybody know how many wolves are there usually in a pack? If you know, raise your hand. Keegan? I'm guessing about four or five. Well, that's a good guess, Keegan. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. Most wolf packs are about seven or eight, 
but there can be wolf packs that are as large as 40 wolves. Now that's rare, but there are wolf packs that have a dozen or two dozen in them, and that's not so rare. But most wolf packs have only about seven or eight. Who's in a wolf pack? Do you know the answer? Raise your hand. I mean, who, what makes up a wolf pack? Anybody? Kate? Who's in a wolf pack? Wolves. Kate? Yeah, wolves are in it. But I mean, what kind of wolves? Is it just a random pack of individuals that come together? Or, the, or is a wolf pack made up of specific individuals? Well, a wolf pack is that, Simon? Are you raising your hand? Yeah. Go ahead, Simon. What's, who's in a wolf pack? Uh, mom and dad. Exactly right. Mom and dad and the wolf babies that have grown up. So wolf packs are family packs. A wolf pack is made up of mom and dad and the children. And the children are sometimes uh, teenagers or sometimes even older. So when do wolves move away from their pack? When does a new wolf pack form? Well, about two years old, the males and the females may stay with the pack or they may leave and form their own pack. But every wolf pack is really a family pack. Okay, let me ask another question. True or false, wolves live only in the lower 48 United States. Is that true or false? Somebody else? Kaylin? I'm saying false. Where do you think they live, Salem? Is that, am I pronouncing it right, Kaylin? I'm Aslan. Oh, you're Aslan. We have the names reversed underneath you. Aslan, okay. Aslan, tell me, where do they normally live? You think it's false. Where do they normally live? North America. Yes, they do live in North America, but they also live in Europe. As a matter of fact, at one time, wolves lived all over the world except for two places. They never lived in tropical places like rainforests, and they never lived in the poles. But other than that, they lived all over the world in different kinds of places. So even though we talk, we talk about the wolves in the United States and we often talk about them, the truth is that they live all over the world and they are protected in the United States. So their numbers are coming back. Okay, another true and false. See if you know the answer to this one. Wolves only eat large animals such as deer and bison. Is that true or false? Let me get somebody else who hasn't been. Let me get somebody else. Anybody else, Landon? Riley? Riley, what do you think? False. You think it's false. So what else do they eat besides large animals like deer, bison, elk, moose? What else do they eat? I'm assuming small animals. <laughs> yes, they do. They eat any small animals they can catch. And when they catch a small animal, they usually go hunting by themselves. And when they catch a large animal, they usually hunt in packs because it needs a pack to bring down a large animal, such as a moose or an elk, which is much, who are much bigger than moose. Or by the way, what's the plural of moose? Is it meese or mooses? Who knows? Moose. Keegan, what is it? Moose or meeses? Mooses. Mooses, right. There's no such word as meese, though I, often I like to use it. Okay, last question uh, uh, in the true and false. It's wolves are hunted by mountain lions and bears. Is that true or false? Landon, unmute. True. It's true, uh-huh. Anybody else think it's false? 
Well, the truth is that it's false. Mm -hmm. They aren't usually hunted. In fact, wolves are what's called a primary uh, or the top of the food chain where they are. They are killed sometimes by other animals, but they're not usually hunted by anybody because you'd have to be very foolish to attack a wolf. Why would you have to be very foolish to attack a wolf? Keegan? They're usually in packs and they could bite you. Exactly right. They're usually in a pack and a pack can easily defend itself. Not only easily defend itself, but probably be stronger than any other animal around. So even a mountain lion wouldn't attack a wolf. It might attack it if it's by itself and, it's, and it thinks that nobody else is around, but it would certainly never attack a pack of wolves. Okay, if you have a question now, raise your hand, let me call on you, and you can either ask a question about wolves or anything else. Simon? Why did you write a book about wolves? Why did I write a book about wolves? Well, the truth is, I really, really like wolves enormously. And the reason I like wolves so much is because they're so much like dogs. Like dogs, they are raised by people. And when they're raised by people, wolves are loyal to them. They're friendly, intelligent, and playful. They play with each other. They're so much like dogs, and I love dogs, that I really like wolves. However, let me tell you about photographing wolves. I tried to photograph wolves, but the nearest I got, the wolves were these tiny little creatures on top of hills that were so far away that even with this greatest telescope, telephoto lens that I had, they still were tiny little creatures. And that's why I like to use other people's pictures. Let me show you my favorite two pictures in my book. Can anybody tell me what this picture shows? Claire? Claire? Unmute. What does it show, Claire? Kate? What does it show? Baby wolves. It shows baby wolves in a den where they have just been born. After about three weeks, they are born blind and they can't walk. After about two weeks, they can walk and they can see. And after about four weeks, they actually come out of their den and take a look at this photograph. Here they're coming out of their den and there was a person who was photographing. Can you see this? There was a person who was photographing these wolves and his name is a very interesting one and I'll tell you his name. His name was Art Wolf. Art Wolf was the photographer and he not only, I loved his photograph because his photo, he had to photograph these wolves. He got this camera into the den of wolves by going digging through the back of the den because the mother was at the front of the den and she would have killed him if he dug into the front. I want to thank you very much, guys, for participating. This is the first lesson that I've done on Zoom and you have been fantastic. So I want to thank all of you for coming. And I want to, if you want to say anything, raise your hand, I'll give you a chance to talk now. No? McGuire, what, what, unmute yourself and tell me what you'd like to say. Um, how long does it usually take for you to take, um, make one book? You know, I like that question enormously. And the question is impossible to answer. Abraham Lincoln was once asked, how tall are you, Mr. Lincoln? And they were kidding him because he was well over six feet. And he said, I'm tall enough for my body to reach, for my feet to reach from my body to the ground. And my answer to that question is just long enough for me to start the book and finish it. And sometimes it takes like three or four weeks. Like my book on paper airplanes took me three or four weeks to write. On the other hand, the first time I made a paper airplane, I made years before I wrote the book. So maybe I should count that. My book called Science Dictionary 
took me three years to write. But during that same time, I was writing lots of other books. So it, it varies. It depends upon the subject, how much research I have to do. It also depends upon whether you count that research as part of writing the book or not. Simon, you had a question? You want to unmute and ask your question? What's your favorite thing about wolves? My favorite thing about wolves is that they play when they're puppies, they play together. And I love the fact that they play together. I've seen wolf pups playing together, and I think they remind me of puppies playing together. So that's my favorite thing. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much. Brandon, thank you.